Please welcome to the stage actor and director Kevin Sorbo. Uh, I gotta follow him. <laughs> I'm only half God with a small G, so I don't know, that guy's... So, uh, hello everyone, how y'all doing? It is an honor to be here. It is amazing the number of people that I got to meet backstage here already. And a lot of them I already knew, some I've never met before, so it was pretty cool. So, I've got another labor to do as Hercules, and that's to clean up Hollywood. And that's my job. Um, it's interesting what, what happened to me. I got very vocal about, if you don't know about Hercules, it was the most watched TV show in the world, so I gotta throw that in there. I know that's the pride, that's the sin of pride, but how many actors can say that? Anyway, about 12 years ago, I started getting pretty vocal on the internet, whatever it may be. My wife warned me, she says, they're gonna come after you in Hollywood. She said, I don't care, I'm tired of the hypocrisy. You guys, you see it, not only in Hollywood, you see it in DC every day as well, right? So. I, I, I just said the heck with it. So one day my agent calls me in, along with my manager, and they basically said, we can't work with you anymore. And I said, why is that? Well, because you're Christian and you're conservative. I went, wow. That's amazing. So Christian and conservative equals being a double leper in Hollywood. So I got the boot. I got blacklisted out of Hollywood. I formed my own production company, Sorbo Studios. We've done some amazing movies that I've been part of through my production company, but obviously through other people as well. And I've been blessed to be able to do the things that I want to do to fight back the culture that Hollywood's doing. Walt Disney said back in the 1950s, he said, movies and television will influence our youth. Look what's being played out on our streets, not only in America, but around the world right now. I took my family, I had three speaking engagements in Europe a couple of years ago before the COVID thing hit. So I said, told my wife, I said, look, I'm going to be over there for three weeks. Let's make it a month. Let's take the trip with the kids. We went through Germany. We went through Belgium. We went through Vienna. We went through all these different countries in France. Churches over there right now, people, are nothing but museums. Nobody goes to church anymore. Most have been turned into, turned into nightclubs. It's unbelievable. We are well on that path here as well. Andrew Breitbart, the dear departed good friend of mine, said politics is downstream from culture. Who runs the culture? Hollywood does, and the mainstream media does. And look at the movies and the TV shows coming out of Hollywood right now. It's unbelievable. My first unapologetically faith-based movie was called What If? If you haven't seen it, shame on you, you should see it. All right? It's the same writers that did God's Not Dead, all right? Better movie in my book. But the problem with independent movies, guys, is we need your support. Hollywood does two $300 million movies, Avengers, Avatar, Pirates of the Caribbean. They have $100 million to promote these movies. My movies are on three to five million dollars. That sounds like a lot. That's catering budget on Pirates of the Caribbean. Seriously. We do small budget movies, but we do movies that have hope, love, laughter, redemption, faith, things that are missing in all the movies coming out of Hollywood right now because they have an agenda and you know it. And we need to fight back and not be afraid of them calling us out because trust me, speak up. They're gonna try to cancel you anyway. Facebook took me down about five months ago for telling the truth. The Zuckerberg cannot stand the truth. He hates it. We talk about the light up here, all right? I did a movie called Let There Be Light. You should see that one, too. Thank you. Some people saw that. Every time I've been funded in my movies, it's been a God thing. And this is the example of Let There Be Light, why it was a God thing and how that even happened. I'm at my office. Oh, by the way, we left California two and a half years ago. We now live in Florida. So, thank you. We left, we left one of the worst governors in America to, the, I think, the best governor with DeSantis. The guy's a rock star. So I'm sitting in my office back in California. This is three years ago. Phone rings. I pick it up. Hello. Sorbo, it's Hannity. I went, oh, I've been on a show, so I wasn't surprised he has my number, but he's never called me before. He said, I loved your movie, Soul Surfer and God's Not Dead. You got something like that. And I said, well, I do. He says, can you pitch it to me? I said, sure. He goes, fly to New York. Can I just pitch it to you now? He goes, no, get on a plane. He hangs up. So my wife and I 
and the other writer, my wife co-wrote it with another guy. We fly to New York, we pitch him. The miracle of this, the first miracle, was that for 30 minutes, Sean Handy did not interrupt us. He listened the whole time. It was amazing. So we finished the pitch. He turns around, grabs his checkbook, boom, writes a check right there and then. He says, I know nothing about your business. I don't know your business at all. I know you got this thing called dailies that people look at after every day that you film. I don't need upgrades on this. I don't need you to call me and say shooting went well today. When the movie is completely done, when you're ready to put it into the movie theaters, bring it to me. I said, Sean, you are my most favorite executive producer I've ever met in my entire life. Because <laughs> trust me, they're usually on a set going, why haven't we started filming? What are we waiting for? That's how Light There Be Light, Let There Be Light was made. Please see it, I highly recommend it. It's an amazing, amazing movie. The what if story is another good story because Dallas Jenkins directed that. Now Dallas is doing The Chosen right now. I know a lot of you do know The Chosen. So this is really one of the first faith-based uh, things that he did. And he sent me the script, because he's friend, we're friends, known each other for years, and uh, you know, his kids are my kids' age. He sends me the script, he just wants my take on it. I read it, I said, who's playing Pastor Ben in this movie? And he says, well, he listed a couple actors. And I said, no, 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 I'm playing this role. He said, dude, I can't afford you. This budget is so small, and I said, you pay me, Whatever Screen Actors Guild says, you gotta pay me for the minimum. I'm doing this role. It is an amazing, amazing, heart-touching, wonderful movie. Christy Swanson's in it, John Ratzenberg is in it. You guys all remember John Cliff, the postman in Cheers? He plays this really curmudgeon, smart-ass, can I say that, smart-ass angel? <laughs> to come down to show me that I'm not on the road God intended me on, God wanted me on this road. The trouble is my character, I like the road that I'm on, and I have no choice but to go see what God had intended for me. It's a wonderful, heart-touching movie. I recommend it. I'm speaking at an event in Palm Springs a couple years ago. And I did a Q&A up on stage with my wife, Sam. And people were asking questions about the movie industry and things about whatever we got to do. I'm signing my book afterwards. This gentleman walks up. He waited in line. He says, I got this much money. Can you make a movie? Once again, another God thing. We shot the movie. It's coming out in theaters in February. It's called Miracle in East Texas, a true story set in 1930. It's a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful movie. We got Lou Gossett Jr. We got John Ratzenberger again. We got Tyler Maine. We got just such an amazing cast. It's won everything from best romantic comedy to best faith-based film and everything in between. I love that they can't pigeonhole this movie. So when it comes out, here's the key, guys. We need your support. We don't have $100 million to put a trailer in every football and basketball uh, TV show, whatever. We gotta compete against Hollywood because they are winning the battle, trust me. My wife wrote an amazing, amazing story called The Miracle Man. It wasn't touched by an angel by any means. It was punched by an angel. We actually sold it to Sony Studios, okay? Seven months later, through six rewrites, they decided not to do it. You know why? Because it had God in it. And it was hard-edged, it was a hard-edged story. But what's interesting is why we pitched that to another studio, another network, this is what showed me what we're up against in Hollywood. The woman, who remained nameless, her top executive at a network, after we pitched her, she said, okay, I get it, Kevin, you, got it. you have an audience out there that likes to watch your movies. Even if people like these movies and to go to them, things like that. She goes, I'm Jewish, but my faith is somewhere over there, sitting on a shelf, right? So she says, I know people want to see the movies that you make. I just don't know why they want to see them. And that's what we're dealing with the blinders that these people have. I mentioned Let There Be Light to you. It opened number two per screen average. Here's a $2.3 million movie. Opens number two against Thor Ragnarok, a $300 million movie. Monday after opening weekend, I get a call from Netflix. Netflix calls me and says, we'd love you to come to our Hollywood offices. We want to talk to you about opening an inspirational division here at Netflix. I was like, wow. Three meetings over two months with them. Here it is two years later. They have done nothing. It was lip service. And in that last in-person meeting, I looked at them and I said, you need to get past your hate 
in your ideology towards people who are Christians. There's 80 million homes out there that want the kind of movies that I do. 80 million. And because of your hate, you don't want to help. It's, an, it's, it's incredible that that's what we got to put up with, but that's what we have to put up with. And we're going to keep fighting this fight, guys, because I'm not going to give up. I, I love what I do. I just finished the Ronald Reagan movie. Dennis Quaid plays Reagan. I play as pastor. He'll be out next spring. And I'm very excited to tell you right now, I am prepping to direct and act in the next Left Behind movie. Thanks. So I leave, I leave of all places, we're shooting in Canada in November. I'm not looking forward to that. But I got a great crew up there. They're the same people I worked with on uh, Miracle in East Texas. So I'm looking forward to that, but not November. I grew up in Minnesota. I don't miss the cold weather. I want to be able to golf every day of the year if I can. And by the way, the Ryder Cup, we're up 9-3 to three over Europe, in case you guys didn't know. <laughs> There's golf fans here. I know that. So... But um, I would love you all to go to SorboStudios.com. Please sign up. We'll keep you up to date with what's going on with everything we are coming down the road. SorboStudios.com. A lot of information on there. My wife and I put both of our sites together. My wife is a, a firehouse. She actually went to Duke University, just so you know. She was a biochemical engineering major. I went to college for completely different reasons. <laughs> but, but we managed to find each other anyway. <laughs> But uh, she's speaking up in Cincinnati right now, otherwise she'd be here because she's, we're homeschoolers, she's a homeschool advocate, she's a powerhouse in that world. And uh, if you talk to her about reforming public education, she will get in your face and say, we need to abolish public education. <laughs> and if you're gonna look for a silver lining with COVID, the one silver lining that I have found is that 1.8 million children have been taken out of public schools because parents woke up and they saw what our teachers are doing out there. We gotta fight, guys. We gotta fight, we can't be afraid of it. It cost me my career. Look, I look at, I love Robert Frost, the road less traveled, right? Jesus was the ultimate road less traveled guy and he got persecuted and attacked. And now myself along with many of you are getting attacked, here's the thing. Let's turn the road less traveled into a superhighway. Let's get out there and not be afraid. Don't be afraid to lose your friends. I tell pastors all the time, you work for God, you do not work for government. My, uh, still my pastor back in California for 10 years, Pastor Rob McCoy, does a lot of work with Charlie Kirk and Turning Point. You know Rob, Rob's a rock star. And I love what he has said, as I was stuck with me, he says, Politics and religion do go together. It's how his country was for formed. That's where we get our laws from the Bible, right? But he says, I'm not afraid to work my congregation down to a manageable size. <laughs> do not be afraid to speak the truth. The darkness hates the light, but we're going to bring the light, you guys. We're going to continually bring the light to the rest of the world and wake everybody up. God bless you. God bless America. And God bless everything you guys do. Thank you so, so much. Thank you.